Hi everybody, this is Lara at pureelliotwave.com. Your extra free analysis today is for copper. And a quick reminder, my list of extra free analysis is currently closed, so if you request an analysis from me of a, another market, uh, it will not be added to the list. I will let you know when my list is opened again. It's just too long and I need to work through it. Elliott Wave Analysis first, Classic Analysis last. At the monthly chart, I'm going to start my wave count down here in January 2016. From this low to this high, I had previously counted this as 1, 2, 3, 4. And last time I did my analysis, I'd expected more downward movement for the fourth wave, but it overlapped into first wave price territory, so that wave count was invalidated. So I've moved the degree of labelling here down 1 degree, and I'm saying this is 1, 2, one, two, now expecting three, four, three, four, five. The target for intermediate three is for it to reach 1.618, the length of intermediate one, at 7.853. That's a fairly common ratio between the third, third and first waves, wave, so the target should have a reasonable probability. I did have another uh, monthly chart for copper, considering this could be A, B, C. But I'm not going to publish that because it just doesn't have the right look because you'd have to see C from this low to this high as a completed five wave impulse and you'd have to see this as the final fifth wave unless you saw some kind of triangle in here for a fourth wave and that really would be pushing it. The subdivisions just, just don't have a good fit and the proportions don't look good from this low to this high, this movement does not look like a completed five wave structure. It looks like the five is over here, followed with an expanded flat. And so now I have one, two, one, two, with intermediate one over here, and intermediate two, an expanded flat correction. A subdivides as a three, B subdivides as a three, and moves beyond the start of A, and C subdivides as a 5. It's ended with this really bullish long lower wick. On the monthly chart, there's a very strong bullish hammer candlestick pattern that supports this wave count that expects this low at 3.132 is likely to be sustained. Let's take a look at the daily chart. We're going to focus in on this movement down here. Here's the end of intermediate 2. From this low to this high, there's a really good looking five wave impulse, and I'm going to label it minuet one, two, three, four, five. I'm going to label this minute wave one within minor wave one. I'm going to label this with some hesitation. Minute wave two could be complete here, but it could be moving side sideways as some kind of double combination. If it does continue sideways and lower, then technically it may not move beyond the start of one below 3.132. From the slow to this high, this impulse subdivides perfectly with perfect alternation between a flat for minuet 2 and a zigzag for minuet 4. Within minuet 2, sub-minuet C has moved slightly below the end of A. There's no truncation here. And likewise, for minuet 4, C has moved below the end of A. There is no truncation here. If minute 2 is over here, minuet C has moved slightly below the end of A. There is no truncation. I don't like wave counts with truncations. Markets only form truncations as part of a much stronger movement. It's not common to see markets form truncations. And here's another little tip. If you're looking at work online calling itself Elliott Wave and you notice a bunch of truncations, question that work. Question the predictive value of that Elliott Wave work if it's got truncations in it it will probably not be particularly good. Uh, usually I notice that truncations and wave counts are there to conform to an analyst's bias. Let's have a look at some classic analysis now. At the weekly chart level, price is bouncing up off support at 3.2. There's that really strong bullish hammer candlestick pattern on the monthly chart, but there isn't a bullish candlestick pattern on the weekly chart. That's okay, the absence of a candlestick reversal pattern here doesn't mean the trend can't reverse, and that monthly candlestick is really strong, so I'd give that one actually quite a lot of weight. Within these upward weeks that are completed, there is a little bit of push from volume. As price rises, there is some increase in volume in upward weeks, so that supports the Elliott Wave count. No signal from on balance volume, this is a very weak range and it hasn't broken out of it. ADX is declining, no clear trend at the weekly chart level. At the weekly chart level, both RSI and Money Flow Index reached 
oversold at the low. So even though the trend wasn't very extreme, conditions did reach reasonably oversold, and that supports the view that that low is likely to be sustained. They're both back in neutral territory now, as is stochastics. ATR showing a little decline as price moves higher. That could be common for the early stages of a new trend. I'm not that familiar with this particular market to tell you whether or not that's normal, so I'd keep an eye on that. It does indicate a little weakness. At the daily chart level, this downward trend did reach very extreme above both DX lines and above 45 for ADX. In those extreme conditions, there's single bullish divergence between price and RSI and double bullish divergence between price and money flow index. I am drawing these green lines across the lows because it's visually intuitive, but when I consider divergence, I'm considering closing prices, not the lows just so you know. So given the extreme trend, extreme oversold conditions and bullish divergence, I give weight to this morning star candlestick pattern. Now this, just to note, this isn't a perfect looking morning star because the real body of the little star is actually slightly within the real body of the first candlestick. It's not below it. So it's not the ideal looking morning star, but I'll, I'll call it a morning star with that um, hesitation and I will say that the third candlestick in it is quite bullish closes well above the first candlestick star has some push from volume the third candlestick doesn't have so much push from volume but we are starting to see for upward sessions some increase in volume as volume pushes price higher so that's good to see for a bullish case look out for support to continue at 3.2 if we see a deeper pullback no no Signal from on balance volume, it's within a weak range, no breakout there. The downward trend reached very extreme, ADX is declining, the DX lines are whipsawing. At this stage, there's no clear trend at the daily chart level. RSI, money flow index and stochastics all in neutral territory. ATR declining as price rises. There is some weakness in this upward movement. That's my only hesitation for the bullish case. Apart from that, I would give quite a lot of weight to an extreme downward trend, oversold conditions, bullish divergence and a candlestick pattern that indicates a potential trend change down here. That supports the Elliott wave count and the view that copper could have found a sustainable low down here. That's it from me with an update on my copper analysis for you. Natural gas coming up next. Thank you so much for watching and thank you for all your support.